Hey guys, in this video I'm going to do another sort of long form master plan in Giraffe, get it into Rhino, do some modeling in Rhino with Grasshopper and then export that um, Rhino model back into Giraffe for public consumption. So it'll be quite a long video, um, but it's going to do two things. It's going to show you a bunch of technical stuff and I'm going to do it live. So if there's any mistakes or anything, I'll have to solve them in front of you. And as I'm going, it'll show you like just how cool Giraffe is. And you know, every time I use it, I'm more convinced by how crazy cool it is. All right, so here's our site. And if I just shrink that away, uh, let's do a master plan. So I'm gonna start off with some apartments, finish the street block, you know, build to the street. And um, I'm gonna leave a little entrance there so these guys can come out to the park. And okay, perfect. I'm going to make another little escape stair over there. Oh, I lost it. And this, you know, fiddling around with these apartment algorithms, really cool. And then I am going to do a park in the middle uh, that goes from the central courtyard, but then bleeds out into the street. And I'll just pull it off the walls and I'll just make it a forest. All right, happy days. And let's just make this guy a little taller. And now let's put some sort of connecting street, maybe an avenue with a cycle park, path, or something like that. And cool, bring it down a bit. And, and let's just finish this. We'll make that landscape just a nice little non-treed area, play some sport, and then I'll put another, I'll put another apartment block down here. Okay, maybe two, 30 meter one, and one more, a little a smaller one, there we go. Don't know if that's right, but like, do we want to maintain this, this street wall, or this little gap here, good. I'm just turning some things into a core as well. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. Oh, let's put one more building just here. Community building. Boink. Two stories. We'll look at a sports field here. So maybe one story and then I'll copy it up and pull it back. So we have this like nice terrace on the top. Right, and that is a thoughtful little master plan. And with three minutes in, that's this is a value to your client. We're exploring some numbers. We're getting getting our head around it. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this thing and get it into Rhino and do a little modeling. A little modeling. And I'm going to import uh, export just the GeoJSON. This GeoJSON comes out with a special key called projected. Um, and what that projected key has is a uh, it's. Uh, it's coordinates that are not in that long. They're in a local meter-based space, um, sent closely centered around the origin. So they're like the internal coordinates that Giraffe Engine uses to do the calculations. Um, but if you use this script here, projected.py, we we'll reach and we grab those ones, um, which you know makes this really nice little model. And I print everything out, of course, because I'm a good, good coder. And there we get our little master plan. Now, I don't make the roads because the roads are created by the giraffe algorithm, but I make enough. And what's interesting here is just look how much giraffe is given you, right? Like, so, like, if I, okay, so I've got 294 curves, one, you know, 56 poly surfaces, four curve points in my selection, but it's incomparably poorer information, poorer data than what giraffe has here. You know, like this, we've got the, the, the contours and I could, you know, start adding more and more data here with, you know, without struggling at all. Floor space ratio, traffic volumes, uh, imagery, whatever it is. And, and that data is not even like crappy. It's good. And it can be, you know, I can fade it back and, and make it pr really presentable and beautiful if I want. Whereas if I need to get that information into Rhino, it's a bit of a mission because what I need to do is, you know, some, something like this, and then back to Rhino, and then drag that image in there as a, and I get this option. I think I bring it in as a picture. 
I then have to do this. There we go. And then we go to the top. Top. Maybe if I type the word top, there we go. Um, you sort of get this and then you scale it into, into position. All right, so now in Rhino, at least we've got some contextual information. But that's for free, right? You just get that for giraffe. This is fantastic. So, um, all right, all right. Now, what I said I'd do is, is I'm going to model something and I'm going to model, I've started doing it already. I've got this little surface here that's going to um, represent a, we're going to say, we're going to pretend we're going to pedestrianize this street here. And I want to make like this really nice timber awning uh, over part of the street in the middle like this. And I'm going to do it like classic grasshopper styles. So it's like this free form, you know, thinger. Architecture. Architecture. So I'll bring it a bit lower. Um, okay. Right, let's say we're happy with that. Let's say we're happy with that. It's a bit high here. It's like you can see I've brought the level information in. So this is like way high. So let's just lower that down ever so slightly. So I'll grab those control points and um, oh me oh my. There we go. There we go. Yeah, two story high over there. There we go. Okay, we've got ourselves a shape. Here's our awning. And in Grasshopper, all I'm doing is um, I'm grabbing the, the surface, I'm chucking some isocurves on it, which, so you do the isocurves in the U and the V, and uh, you just get this range component, which outputs like a, a number of divisions between zero and one. And because the surface is reparametrized, it goes between zero and one. So the U and V points are all between zero and one. And then I normally just go X, Y and just, you know, boom, along the diagonal. But uh, because in this instance, the surface is so very long, I just got a wireframe, you'll see it a bit more clearly. The surface is very, very long and very, very thin. So there's like quite a lot in the, the X and the Y is, there's not enough. So I'll add some more Ys, so maybe 38 of them. Then I take those things, I extrude them down to 700 and then I use this Weaver Bird mesh thickener, Majiga to thicken that mesh out. Then I unweld it and I weld it and I de-mesh, deconstruct it just because I don't quite get it. So I just do everything to it until it looks right. And I get this thing that looks, I get these, I get these meshes. And I'm just gonna fix that end up so it's not as, as square. Um, okay, there we go. And then I'm just gonna bake these. Um, actually I'll mesh join them. So I just want one big mesh, mesh join and flatten that in, boop. So now I just get one big mesh. And now I'll just bake, bake it in, and then I will turn everything off. Come back here and go to shaded. There we go. Now I'll delete the surface, the input surface, because I'm not gonna, no round two. Turn off grass up. Okay, so we can see this awesome shape. And I've made the shape, uh, like organic, just so you know it can't be built in giraffe. Giraffe doesn't do organic. Now what we do need to do is add a material to it. So when we bring it into giraffe, uh, it's got to have a material. And that material is going to be a custom material. It's quite annoying, giraffe, uh, rhino doesn't. Okay, and we'll make it like a timbery yellow. So you can go the whole hog with materials. Reflectivity, glossiness. Bump maps, transparencies, environment maps, but this is this is good enough. Just a nice brown, and we just check if it's there by clicking on the rendered viewpoint. And there we go. Okay, so we do we 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 do have it. All right, look at this. Look at how nice timber awning. Ooh, oh dear. Okay, now we're ready to export this thing to Rhino. But before we do so, we've got to center it. It's got to be in the middle. So. Um, what I do is I'm going to type move and I'm going to go select from my rough center. I'm going to try and turn off snap, disable all. Okay. And I'm going to sort of go there. And then if you type in zero and hit enter, it goes to the midpoint. So if I click shaded now, yeah, if I click wireframe now, 
Okay, annoying. Oh, you have to get rid of this picture. Okay, but you can see there's the, the global grid. There's green and red and that sort of centered. So now I'm going to go file, export selected. And we're going to do it as a GLTF binary file. That's going to be awning.glb. And I'll pop it in the, in the downloads folder. And I just leave these. The only way I know of getting it right is just export it once and then try again if it's wrong. All right. Now let's bring it in. So we go to giraffe and we upload this 3D model, we pop it over there and we're gonna upload the file. So new upload, choose a file, awning.glb, open. There it is, save. All right, all right, you use this file. Boom. Hey. <laughs> that is how you get from Rhino to giraffe. Now, is there an advantage here? Have, have we added value? Uh, I would say yes. I think like often uh, when we're presenting master plans and designs, urban designs, combination of, of overdeveloped and underdeveloped design is good. You know, so concentrating on the public sphere uh, is, is great. And being able to communicate to stakeholders like the effort and, and the imagination that you're going to deploy in making this master plan work for the public is effort not wasted um, whereas if you focus all your effort on the design of the buildings and the towers which will be sold to, to private you know people um, that's not normally the right approach especially since this approval the design of these buildings is going to change throughout you know, these big moves, these big macro moves are going to be the thing, the framework that gets put in and then each site will be developed under its own sort of steam, on its own program. You know, very well, this building may be consolidated into something like that or, you know, maybe it comes around this corner, sort of minor tweaks to the master plan. But this strong move of this really nice pedestrianized uh, street over here, that can be something that can sell the scheme. Now... Will this particular timber awning seller scheme? Don't know. Don't know about that. Probably not. I would hazard a, hazard a guess. But with 13 minutes in, and to, to recap, we are, we've spent some time on a master plan. We have exported it to Rhino. We've spent a very small amount of time designing in Rhino using Grasshopper, uh, an object. We've then centered that object around zero and we just exported it as a GLB and popped it into, into Giraffe. 